All right, and hello everyone. It's time for another monthly community call at the Remote Pathways podcast. I'm Jennifer Britton. Super excited to be here with my co-host, Michelle Mullins, as we embark on another monthly community call. First of all, how are you doing today on November the 18th, Michelle? Can't, Can't believe-, believe it's November. Got my cup in hand Ooh. for our bright morning conversation. Love that. Love that. I wish I had one in hand, but anyways, hybrid work style, it's all about the build for me. So I haven't had any time to do anything else, but today I'm excited to be bringing to you um, something connected with our most recent episode, episode 49 at the Remote Pathways podcast. You can check that out on your favorite uh, podcast player, or perhaps just head on over to remotepathways.com forward slash podcast. And this summer, I embarked on a bit of an experiment, another one of those like learning experiments, which would be, what would it be like to develop a quiz? And I developed this hybrid work style quiz that only takes about two minutes to participate in, and you will get some new insights as to potentially what some of your preferences are as you like to work in the hybrid space. So I'm excited about this. How about you, Michelle? What are you excited about as we dive into today's topic? Oh yeah, these quizzes are so much fun and I love learning you know, about people. So can't wait to explore it together today. So to get you started, we've got as usually, uh, as usual, a short activity. And I'd love for people to just take 45 seconds right now lean in the screen and let us know what is the image or icon that is speaking to you today. What is the image or icon speaking to you today? I'll get you to draw it out and then we will uh, and make up a little story around it as well. So 45 seconds. All right. So let's talk about this. I'm intrigued by what you've chosen. Pick one and then I'll, I'll talk to one. What, what, what was the first one you chose, Michelle? Remind me of the question again. Okay. So which one, well, I can't even remember what the question was, but which one is, <laughs> which one is speaking to you perhaps? That's a pretty wide open framing. Which one did spoke to you today? Well, the first one was the magnifying glass and with the invitation of zooming in, being curious about the people um, around me. Nice. It's interesting you say that, you know, people around you. And I, my first one that I chose is one that I've never chosen before, which is this person down here in front of like the whiteboard with the circles. And what I was reflecting on, like zooming into, what have I zoomed into this year? One of my goals for 2021 was to speak to over 100 groups. And I think I've hit that. I haven't actually done the final tally, but this week I've done three speaking engagements, plus I have a fourth tomorrow um, without calling things like this or a podcast. So it's just been interesting in terms of like how I'm showing up or how I've chosen to show up this year in terms of teaching, educating, sharing in a very high touch way. So oh, I'm so glad you went back and researched that because I remember for when we were recording the upcoming episode about the year end review, we had mentioned setting the intention for the beginning of the year. And you said, I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. So it was speaking. Yes, you have been speaking a lot this year. So well done. A lot. Yes. So I see you chose one around speaking now as well. So what was your second icon? Yeah. Second icon was around conversations. (laughs) So I want to zoom in, be curious around the people 
about the people around me and have great conversations. Mm, interesting. And, you know, the second one I chose was this bottom third. It almost looks like two pipes coming together with a nozzle, right? So I imagine that as like stuff coming in from different areas and then turning on the pipe. I have to say the pipe has really been like wide open, gushing, gushing for a, for a long time, especially these last few weeks. Uh, my, my thoughts this morning were, I'm just so glad that next week I can actually put a pause. I'm going to have probably two days um, of no calls, no commitments, which has been unheard of. I think not only just for this year, I, I think it may be even pre-pandemic since I've had two days to not do anything and we don't we don't have a holiday here so right. it's really interesting I can sort of keep working or doing if I choose to do but um, I can turn that pipe a little a little off which will be nice oh that's so great I'm so happy for you and it's funny you chose that one too as soon as you showed that it made me think of reconnecting workspaces bringing people together for a common purpose so absolutely so what else did you choose uh, so I chose the glasses and uh, that just reminds me of perspective, coming with a fresh perspective to these conversations, coming curious to learn more about them. Nice. And I'll segue on. My last one was the second last row, third in, which to me is just all about ensuring that there's still balance, even if it's busy, that there's balance. And with all that I've seen in my world this year, like one thing I have really still managed to hold on to is just getting to the pool, getting out yes. in nature, you know, just really making sure that I'm continuing to renew, which has done, done me well. I think I, I would not be standing still if it was, if I had not been doing that. So that was interesting. And I think, I think that's the icon for renewal. So uh, renewal is going to be a big part of my next six weeks of the year, which is good. Oh, you've modeled that so beautifully for me since 2013 from teaching me about the power of the pause, you know, all those different things or that first program that, um, that I purchased from you about the, your balanced life, right? That was one of your first bodies of work that you brought into the world. And, uh, so thank you for leading the way and showing me how to stay in the game, you know, and serve people well and take care of yourself too. So that's that last icon that I have there. That's me and you continuing to travel on the remote highway together. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And we hope that you enjoy this as well. In fact, this is a table map that's going to be available for purchase soon as part of the 90 day guide. Each one of these icons shows up in the 90 day guide, my latest book, which uh, is over at my desk. But a lot of folks have been enjoying using it for onboarding and reboarding both new and seasoned employees in both the virtual, remote, and hybrid world. And I have to say, I've really been enjoying taking people through the 90-day guide. So weekdays during Q4 2021, I am meeting with folks live 7.30 to 8 a.m. It'll mean that we're off our call fast today, but... We've been doing nine minutes of content and then 21 minutes of action, which has been really super fun. I've so heard so much feedback on that. People are really enjoying it and getting a lot of value. So thanks for doing that. Well, thank you for joining me. You know, whether you've been joining live or on demand and not all the videos go up on my YouTube channel, but many do, but it's an opportunity for you to pause and reflect really aligned with the business philosophy that we've been moving through which originally came out of Plan Do Track. So I wanna thank you, Michelle, for continuously, you're a Plan Do Track facilitator as well as a reconnecting uh, coach, workspaces coach, but you know, you always bring us back to this notion of the quarterly focus. And I think we're gonna continue this into 2022 with our next year of calls and focus. So think about what pauses you are building and what do you have coming up that's gonna be a pause for yourself? Oh, for me, well, I just took one. So I'm, I'm, I took my renewal. So I want to come back and serve others like you uh, that are ready to take their renewal period and, and step up and serve and fill in some gaps for people. So good. So good. Well, we have had some exciting uh, episodes. I love the new thumbnail that you have designed for the quiz to discover your hybrid work style. And then that is building on to our last conversation where you and I sat down to talk about group coaching, 
how important group coaching was for conversation. So lots on the go. And ta-da, really excited to bring to all of you today the hybrid work style quiz that has flowed out of some of the remote pathways conversations that we've been having. It's also flowed out of the reconnecting workspaces, body of work. Interestingly enough, this is probably going to be a separate book, right? This is not embedded in either 90 Day Guide for Success or Reconnecting Workspaces, but it's very closely aligned. And it really has grown out of the decades of work that I've done with teams and organizations, helping people identify and leverage what they're good at. So as we've all traversed across the virtual, remote, and hybrid world, my guess is that you've started seeing some interesting patterns on how people interact, how they communicate, how they make decisions, what they prioritize, and ultimately what motivates them. So the hybrid work styles quiz really is a short two minute, 15 question quiz to help you identify what might be your unique style. And as we're gonna see, there's five types that I cover in this quiz. They're not, that doesn't mean that there are only five, but there are five that this quiz looks at. And they are varied according to the communication. So what channels are they using? What styles of communication? What are their approaches? And that helps us really think about what is unique. So I'm gonna go through in the next few minutes what, your, what the five styles are and give you a couple of questions to think about. So I don't know, Michelle, if you wanna reveal what style you are yet, or if you want us to hold on and you want to reveal it as we go. What do you think? Let's reveal as we go. Reveal as we go. So again, this work has really been, the quiz has been influenced by, of course, the Digital Dozen, our characters that really approach work in such different ways across different industries. And as we're going to meet, we are going to see Sujit today, our project manager. We're going to meet Mo, our creative solopreneur. We'll see Jane, who is our virtual facilitator, and Joe, who is a new team leader or virtual team leader. And of course, they're supporting people like Ned. So just to bring this in light, we have people in the hybrid space who are visionaries. Visionaries love to just look out, cast their vision down the road, see what's possible. And in a hybrid team, the visionary in a team has been so critical in helping us retain focus in the big picture on that long game. So people with a high visionary sort of style often are looking ahead. They may be looking at what's happening in a business. How do I grow this business? They may be thinking about relationships that are going to really help them move down the highway as, as we've been using this hybrid highway analogy. And most likely they're thinking about long-term growth, whether that's their own business or someone else. In the digital dozen, our person who really represents the visionary style is Mo, the creative solopreneur. And thank goodness that she is a visionary because if she's not setting vision and direction, who will? So support needs for people who are in the visionary category because it's not just enough to know our style it's also important for us to think about how can we support people like uh, mo or others who are a visionary on our team we want to help them continue thinking bigger creating a pause to support connection and that's not just connection across people but connection across the dots it may also be about getting themselves out of the way of themselves and perhaps even growing their team because visionaries are unlikely to be able to do it all themselves. So either they're going to build their own team or they're going to help build other teams. Coaching tools, vision work, right? Vision work is key in this space. And I have to say, I've been enjoying over three or four years now supporting coaches in the Coaching Biz Growth Lab. The program is really all about visionary and you know, really helping you pause so that you can set and cast your vision. In terms of our work together and the writing that I've been doing, if you take a look at reconnecting workspaces, I'm always talking about vision. Five ways to work with vision. We've done calls on this. There's been podcasts on this. So the visionary is really a key player within the team. And he or she is often at the head moving forward. So anything you want to mention about visionary? This is, I took the quiz three times and I landed on visionary every single time. So Ooh. yes, I say that is true. And it's so funny because I just said a moment ago, thank you for teaching me how to pause. 
uh, that was a pivotal thing. And I did participate in the coaching uh, business growth lab. Um, and that was foundational to a lot of the work that I'm, I'm doing now. So yeah. Great. I think there's really like the visionary is also a key person on the team who can really help you create the pause because that's what they want, they need, and look ahead. So a second type is the innovative experimenter. And even without looking at what that is, think about who might be the innovative experimenter. Who's that person on the team that's always sort of like in the lab, mixing things up, really thinking about how, what if I put this and this together? And they really have a high need for creativity and experimentation. Within the Digital Dozen, Jane, our virtual facilitator, is the representative of the innovative experimenter. She's been on the front lines for years in this virtual remote hybrid space, bringing people together for conversation. And as we know, her and most innovative experimenters are really comfortable in trying out new ideas. They are often the pioneers or the early adopters of things. Often in innovation, we're creating new learning experiences. So think about how that is playing out on your team and who inhabits this role. Certainly when I'm working with innovative ex experimenters, we wanna be breaking things down. So we might be using the six thinking hats from De Bono to sort of look and unpack really complex issues. We might also be building up and so using design sprints and design days as a place to quickly, rapidly design and prototype and get it out into the world. Because the innovative experimenter is probably moving very fast. So Virtual Facilitation Essentials is a program I've been offering for these folks. And it's been really interesting. I think you took this program too, maybe in like yes. 2015, yes. in the first year that I offered it. You know, here we are six years later. And seeing, I still continue to see people getting out on the skinny branch in terms of what is their growth edge around virtual, virtual facilitation. So innovative experimenter, if you're an innovative experimenter, let us know what else I haven't mentioned, but I, there is an IXP in me. <coughs> so with that, <coughs> let's go next to the builder. And as you can imagine, I'm really a bit of a builder like to get things done, just like Joe, let's get it done. And really needs our um, <laughs> renewal, growth and pause. I, uh, there's maybe a big drive to keep growing, but in order to keep growing, you have to pause and renew. And you know, their preferences on a team, I put connector culture wizard here, but the builder also needs others, right? They cannot build without the connector. They cannot build without a blueprint on where are we going and what are like, how do we want to be, which is what the culture wizard is. Mm. So as I've said, <clears throat> they really do need sort of the pause and builders can't build alone. If they get too much in the weeds of building, they're going to lose their ability. So they become often great coaches in helping tap into the expertise of others. And that's where we typically may find builders even either in sort of a solopreneurial environment or as a leader. And the leaders in the remote space need to remember that they cannot do it alone. So they often do need leadership coaching. And this has been a big focus. You know, builders will love reconnecting workspaces and from one to many. Anything you want to say about the builders of the world? Well, as you're doing these descriptions, people are coming to mind. I've real tangible people. I've grown fond of the Digi Dozen here throughout the years, but yeah, real people are coming to mind as you're sharing the description. And now I want to know the results. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take the quiz and see you what- You want to take up. the quiz. Yes. Well, take the quiz. And, you know, some of you might find that you're a connector like Ned. Ned is our new employee on a block and they have a high need for connection with others clarity on roles, clarity on resources, understanding relationships so that they can put it together because their role is really putting it together. So their support needs may be onboarding and reboarding, connection, having a roadmap and understanding where they are, where they're going, and then being able to liaise with others. So really going back to that, you know, what's my relationship map? Who is here and what is going on? Now connectors, it's been interesting and I'm gonna ask this question. I, I think though it, for the 90 day guide for success, I've had a lot of people who are builders come up and a few connectors. So mm -hmm. it's interesting as I've been rolling out that those calls this fall, but they may enjoy a couple of coaching tools, including the is, is not. So the is, is not is a very quick 
back of the napkin technique where we can start breaking down what a task is and what a task is not. And why I put that in the connector bucket is because um, connectors really do need clarity, clarity on what I'm doing, clarity on how I connect in, who do I need to go to, and they will also find things like the ways of working really invaluable. So that's the connector. Project managers, we've got Sujit, of course, who is likely maybe to be a builder and a connector. And they may be wanting to really get things done, coordinating the team, matching resources. They may have need for pause tools and connections with others because of course a project manager is activating all of those resources. So, so many tools I would say like the uh, is is not tool is another important one for them as is uh, leveraging the resources in plan do track and reconnecting workspaces. I love Sujit as a, a suitcase. That just know, reminds me, is, he's the one with all the tools and resources. <laughs> he's ready to show up, right? And he's ready yeah. to connect, but he's also, importantly, he needs to build, right? And that's what a project manager does. So the only one that we haven't shown today is the culture wizard. And often people like Mel are the coach culture wizards. So culture wizards are often coaches, they might be leaders, but they're ones on a team who are really helping the team define how do we do things here? And as the team decides how do we do things here, they may be going below the waterline into values and vision and assumptions, all of these things that make us quite unique. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and I want to invite you to take the quiz. You can go to bit.ly forward slash hybrid work quiz hybrid work quiz and that's can you put that that in the um notes for this yeah um, we'll put it in the notes and it's just bit.ly forward slash hybrid work quiz three minutes top some people are taking like a minute others take up to three minutes but you've got time to do that and i think it's really important that it goes into one of something that i say part of great leadership and complexity is about distilling things down to their core when we can understand who we are at our core, it makes things easier and more simple. And so if you Michelle, feel led, please share your results. We'd love to know. Let us know on Facebook, send us an email, put it in the comments. Let us know what your results are. We'd love to know more about you. Yeah, who are you, right? Like, who are you on this team? I'm gonna take us back to just these five, as you can see, and again, We'll probably focus on this. I'll be doing some separate calls starting December the 1st, I believe is the first call. I'll be doing a 45 minute dive into the five different styles. And I hope that you might join us. So head on over to my Zoom room um, and we'll put the, the invite over at Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. So Michelle, that's it for today. What, any final reflections on this? You've done the quiz. How has the quiz helped you in, you know, your work? Uh, it's it made me curious and it really, I like seeing my main one and then my supporting one and seeing how I can add value to others. So it's helping me more clearly articulate how I can show up and help others during this time. And that's the thing, you know, part of reconnecting workspaces along as part of the hybrid work style quiz is we are not alone. So it's not just about understanding your style, but understanding how your style connects in with others and yes. what other people need, which is why I'm going to be doing these 45 minute calls to help you understand your style, but also help you understand those on your team. And this is something that you can share. I really hope that you will share. Again, there may be people that are like, no, that's not me. And that's fine, right? It's, this is a conversation starter or sparker. And that's what I really would like you to think about as you move forward. All right, Michelle, uh, let's see. What do we have coming up? Oh, here's a, our hybrid work style quiz. What do you want to put here? Oh, this is, this is a quote. None of us is as smart as all of us. Yes. Ken, Ken Blanchard. Ken Great Blanchard. Quote. So conversation sparker this month, apropos, what is your unique hybrid work style? Ta -da. Ta -da. So with that, I think that's it for our call. Next one, Thursday, December 2nd at 7 a.m. Last monthly community call for the year. Wow. Can't believe it, Michelle. We're heading into that final pass. 
That's great. And speaking of final, these are probably your final words because now you got to head over to uh, the sprint, the 90 days, right? I got to head on over to the 90 day guide. Yeah, where we're going to be taking that deep dive. It's day 47. Whew, can't believe we're halfway through that process as well. So I wonder what we'll be doing in 2022. It seems like all these big projects are starting to wrap up, but maybe there's that just- little, uh, yeah, yeah. The, a little saying just went, uh, all things new in 2022. <laughs> so Ooh. maybe it'll be a breath of fresh air, a time okay. of renewal for you too. So. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think I'd like to have it as a springboard for 22. I don't know. I'll have to come up with something. Lots of new stuff in 21. So, you know, something about layers in 2022. Love it. Any more comments from you, Michelle, as we go to wrap? Uh, just, this has been so much fun. I love starting my day with you. Thanks for taking the pause. And I can't wait to hear um, what other people think as they watch on demand. All right, everyone. Thanks. And we look forward to seeing you in our final 21 call for the year. Be well, take care.